Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Bobby and I'm the Emperor of Paint. Ooh, no, just kidding. I actually wanted to talk about this for a second. This is really interesting. I, I want to talk about the process. Okay, I usually work with metallics and I usually w work with folk art. That's a really good brand of paint. They have, I mean, you can go to Michael's. There's other brands that I will use, but I, there are certain brands I won't use because they're inferior paint, but I'm not going to go into that. And I want to talk about procedure. Um, I usually pick about three or four colors. I always do white. There's a paint called Hologram that you can find at any um, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, or Walmart, whatever. And it's re it really works great for painting it. It, it does something really special. You got to buy some and try it. And what else? Um, there's, I also use fluorescent, so you can try that. It glows in the dark. That's always fun. But I also want to talk about the process of just making this one. Um, I laid down the paint beforehand, and then I palmed it. Basically, what I did was I laid down my hand. I'm going to lay this down for a second. Excuse me. I, put down, I put down the paint, and then I just basically went around and palmed it. And they kind of made that texture. And the paint will mix, but the trick is not to overdo it. If you... If you continually mix, it's just going to be gray. It's going to start all blending into one color, which you don't want. You want the colors to, to blend for just a second, and then you pause. And, they, and that gives it the, the variation in depth. I'm just going with what I can, what, what I know. Okay. And the, here's the interesting thing. is I, I was going to make a flower out of this one. I wasn't sure I was going to do a hibiscus. And then I, I remember watching the, <coughs> God, that, that one Disney movie about you know the Polynesian. I don't even going to go into it. I can't even remember it. Anyways, and the tattoo that the grandmother had on her back, I think it was her back, but I really, I, just, I thought about it, it was so cool, and I was like, thinking of things in the ocean to paint, and so yeah, manta ray, and th the process of making it was interesting, I just went online and just looked at pictures of manta ray, just like I do with whales and whatever, and I just look at them for a minute, look at the size, the, the fins, you know, that kind of thing, and then basically just, <clears throat> and did my style of dissecting it and keeping it like broken apart but still you know you can you know what it is but at the same time it's just in pieces which is kind of my style if you go back over my you know previous 500 plus paintings you'll see how I kind of worked with that because I used to, I I started out doing sculptures in college for like 35 so I was really good with abstract and then I when I started doing paintings I realized my limitation as far as like you know, I'm not, I'm never going to be, um, somebody that can paint, you know, like that one young lady that I was talking about, I can't even pronounce her name, but who painted the face of Christ, I think it was Christ, and you're really beautiful, I mean, talk about details, like a picture, or like a to photograph, so it's ridiculous, I can't do that, I'm basically stuck having to improvise with my, you know, limited abilities, so I do abstract, and I do things, that, but, I mean, the, the way this came out was, and that's one thing I will also mention, is when I do a background of three or four colors, what I'll do if, in the foreground is I like to do is a mixture of all the background colors into one color. And then basically what it'll do is sometimes it'll actually be able to disappear into the painting from different angles. If you look at it from the side, sometimes it disappears, but it'll pop too. So yeah, anyways, I just wanted to talk about this painting and like I do, I always lay down my paints, I mean my canvas when I do that, sorry. When I'm painting, I always lay it down flat. I let gravity deal with it. You know, I usually gravity paint, that kind of thing. And I, I don't really pour, I'm not, but here's the thing, and that's another trick I use, is when I lay it down flat on the ground, I'm able to pour thicker amounts of paint onto it. Like I, when I was tracing this, I was able to keep putting thicker amounts of, <clears throat> excuse me, paint on it to help it give it that depth so yeah laying it flat on the ground is really great plus you know you got to have a warm day to dry it but yeah so i just thought i'd talk about my art for a minute something less heavy and not you know you know something light and fun anyway and maybe hopefully it'll give you ideas for art in the future like i said michael's you know metallic paints are awesome i just love it because it just it adds something to it and like i said you know Use what you got, and if you don't got it, you make, you know, you find ways around it. So I use metallic paints to actually add to the, to the attraction of my art. So, 
something to think about. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Okay,